Hello and welcome to 3D Print Fashion. Today I like to show you how I modificate my Genius Pro and I start with to place that printer inside the IKEA Plaza. The reason why is I prefer to print inside a housing to have a better print quality by printing ASA or ABS. This printer fits perfectly inside the IKEA Plaza. To reduce a little bit the vibration noises, I designed some little feeds which will be printed by TPU filament. This feeds printed very well on the Genius Pro and looks really nice. And also don't look too bad below the printer. I'm not really a big fan to have a filament roll on the top of the printer. It's very often an issue for wobbling on the set axis. So I designed some little feeds also for the original filament stand. And you can put this stand directly into the feeds and place that beside the printer. The filament roll is now beside our printer. We need to handle the filament now by another way than before. For that reason I designed that little part which feeds the filament from the top of the printer down to the extruder. It fits also with bigger tubes. If you have a smaller standard tube you can place a little bit tape around it and it will hold perfectly. To place this little part on the top you only need to push it inside the slot. The correct way to place the roll is to place it crosswise behind the printer, not like I show here. Also a point I like to improve is the fan duct. I prefer a fan duct which have at least a half circuit to blow down to the part which need to be cooled. This gives a much more even cooling and in my opinion much more better print quality in printing overhangs. Like with all new printers, I start with the extruder calibration. So this is not so easy on the Genius Pro, depending to the point that it have extrusion protection for filament while not printing. So I like to show you now how I deal with that issue and how I make that calibration. At first, I set my ruler here to the point on the tube where it, the filament come into the extruder and measure 100 millimeters upwards. So measure very exactly, not like I do here in the video, every millimeter is necessary. As next you need to connect your printer to a Repetier server or to Octoprint or for example by USB to printer face. As next you type in the G code M503 and search for the output of M92. These are the values inside the firmware and we copy them to have the possibility to go back to that configuration if necessary. With G28 you start now the homing process. This takes a few seconds. As next I set the temperature to 200 degrees with M104 S200. As next I move the nozzle up with G1 set 100 and move X and Y to the position X5 Y5 with G1 X5 Y5. Now the magic starts. With M83 I switch to relative positioning. With G1 E100 F110 I extrude now 100 millimeters. With 
Next, we will measure the part which was not extruded. For me here, it was 4.03 millimeters, so 0 0.3 millimeters is much lesser than my line is big here. So I take 4 millimeters, which sounds for me like a good value, and we start the calculation. So the original steps are 445. Extruded was 96 millimeters and wish to extrude was 100 millimeters, which will be multiplicated. Now we have a new step value, which is 463.5. This new steps we will send to the printer now. With M92 463.5. With the command M500, we will save that data to the firmware settings. With M503, we will check if the values have placed correctly. And we see here that the value is now E463.5. Perfect. As next, we will extrude 100 millimeters again and check if that little painted line will stop directly before the filament goes inside the extruder tube. Perfect. That was a success. Extruder is now calibrated. Because we are already in our terminal window, we will do now a pit tuning for nozzle and heat bed to have a better calibration of that parts. I start with M106 S200 to switch on the part fan to 78%, which is somewhere in the middle between what I usually need. As next, I will start the PID calibration with M303E220 C5. 5 are the cycles and the S220 is the temperature where the pit tuning try to calibrate the temperature. This could take a while. In meantime we can do a M503 and search for the M301 and M304 values. These values we will copy and save them to go back to the firmware standard if needed. As soon the PID process has been finished, we will get new values. And these new values we will send now to the firmware by doing M301 E0 and type in the P, I and the D values and send it to the firmware with an M500 we will store that values to the EPROM. The procedure to do this with the heat bed is more or less the same. We will do a M303 E-1 and the S70 plus a C5. I also choose the S70 as a middle value between my needed temperatures. As soon we have the calibration informations from the PID tuning, we will send these data also to the printer with a M304 and the P, I and D values. With an M500, we will store this information to the EPROM. That's it. Our printer is now PID calibrated. To calibrate the flow of the printer, I'm using a two volt piece with a white of 0 0.8 millimeters printed with a 0 0.4 layer white. After printing that part we measure the walls and check the white. For me it's somewhere around 0 0.88 0 0.89. I choose 0 0.89. Now we make the calculation. 80 is the wish divided by 89 multiplicated by 110 
This is the flow I set it up in Cura. My new value is 98.9%. This flow information I will type into Cura and do the printing of this part again. Now I have a wall size of 0 0.8, 0 0.81. Perfect, like it should be. To check the quality of my calibrations, I printed a clearance test. With this clearance test, we will check how good the printer can now do such things. Let's see the details. 0 0.6 can be moved. 0 0.5 also. 0 0.4, very nice. 0 0.3, also free. And 0 0.2 is also working. 0 0.1 fixed, but that's not a big issue. 0 0.2 is more than enough to handle most of the prints. Because the surface is not perfect, I will increase the flow in Cura by 1%. After that, I printed a calibration cube and check now how good it has been printed. We see now the light is coming from the upside, which show much more wobbles than are really existing. The cube is printed very well and the dimension with 20.01 on the x-axis is very good. On the y-axis we have a 20.01 also, pretty nice. Perfect, this is what I like to have. I also modificated the print plate. I put a FR4 plate on it, which gives me a much more better bed adhesion and nicer printouts. Thank you for watching the video. If you like it, thanks to give me a thumbs up. If you like to see more videos from me, click on subscribe and hit the bell to don't miss any new videos. Happy printing. Bye.